despite a popular rumor going around, there will be no brownies served at this talk. I'm Melise Galula, co-founder of Well and Good, and I'm just thrilled to be here. This is my third Global Wellness Summit. It's wonderful to see you all, and thank you, Susie, for including me this year so I can talk to you about what our editorial team back in New York calls the most lit topic in wellness. So quick poll before I get started. Who here has tried CBD? Oh, amazing. Okay, who here is on CBD right now? Okay, I admit nothing, but thank you. Thank you for the honest uh, participation there. So at Well and Good, we declared about two years ago that cannabis was going to become more commercial. We could not have predicted just how much and just how big this would get with CBD in particular. So before I get too deep, let me just spell out what CBD is. It is a compound derived from the cannabis and hemp plant. They're actually the same plant, cannabis sativa, grown differently for marijuana than they are for CBD. It is now the buzziest and fastest growing trend in beauty products, the beauty industry in the US, um, and wellness supplements as well. Here's a teaser, we'll come back to it. What exactly is CBD? Um, it's short for cannabidiol. Cannabidiol. I had to listen to Webster online say it eight times. Um, it is one of 90 to 200 cannabinoids or compounds found in the marijuana and hemp plant. So I like to think of these, this is in the beauty industry, I like to think of these as like antioxidants or the potent extract from the plant. Unlike THC, which is the part of the plant that gets you high, which is the cannabinoid we're all more familiar with, CBD does not produce that. In fact, in the US, for a product to be considered, you, uh, CB, a CBD product to be considered friendly on the market at this point, it may not contain less than 0.3% THC. So there's a traceability there. So as I mentioned, um, it does not get you high, and I hope that's not disappointing to you. But um, when, for the purposes of this talk, I'm just going to be focusing on the products that are THC-free and being used in the beauty and wellness supplement category. So the list of health benefits ascribed to CBD is longer than a line at a Lululemon sample sale. Anecdotal claims range from helping with migraines and insomnia to inflammation to menstrual cramps, joint pain, muscle pain. I'm going to be sharing some high-level consumer perceptions with you from a well and good survey of 1,000 readers, as well as some data. Here's the biggest data point right now, and Susie, we might have to update the global economy slide that is your favorite um, sooner than we thought. CBD products will make up anywhere between 200 and 400 million of the 820 million American hemp industry this year. And I put that range between two and 400 because it's not being tracked super tightly. Like as a journalist looking at it, I noticed that beauty was over here, muscle salves and balms were over here, body care, it was kind of fragmented. So what I did was put a range together, including all the things that touched on our space. With this number of $2.1 billion predicted by 2020, we're looking at a huge influx. We're looking at launches coming at the speed of light. And that is why I believe our editors at Well and Good are getting pitched up to 12 CBD launches a day. That's the highest number. That's not average. That's just the highest number. So the categories that we are seeing come across our desks are skincare, post-workout creams, anxiety supplements, relaxation and clarity drinks, pain and inflammation elixirs, sexual health and menstrual health products, calming chocolates, maybe soon your spa will put one on the pillow, insomnia gummies, and vegan mascara. So these categories really speak to the fact that as I mentioned earlier, everyone is looking to this plant for their specific wellness purpose. And because it is incredibly multifaceted, it's showing up in such a wide and diverse range of products. 
So currently, thanks to all those brands that I gave you a little snippet of, most of them are indie, cannabis is really getting a wellness rebrand. These brands are elevating the conversation and the category from the dorm room or the thing you did in your parents' basement or the stoner image to a wellness lifestyle product. Even though this picture here depicts millennials, they are the bulk of our readers, it's very interesting to me that most of the research that we've done shows it's boomers and people above 40 who have used CBD first. So for me, even though I'm a journalist covering this, it was my dad who was my CBD dealer, um, <laughs> using it for his joint pain. Hi, dad. Um, so it's very interesting that this isn't driven by, you know, maybe the, the things that young people might run out to enjoy or test um, and embrace as part of their healthy lifestyle. This is something I think that's starting in response to larger health concerns that aren't being met in Western medicine. And it's certainly not the first time that people have looked to plants for that kind of a solution. So because there are so many indie players today, because the legality in the US is still murky, and I'll get to that in a little bit, um, and because the science is still out, um, there's a bit of a free-for-all happening right now with a lot of investment, a lot of conversation, a lot of move toward this industry. Um, here are some of the big players who've announced interest in CBD um, or have already come onto the market. A PDLX is the epilepsy drug that was just FDA approved. It's the first drug using CBD in it. Um, CBD has said to be anti-spasmodic, anti-seizure. Um, there's a very famous viral YouTube video um, of people self-medicating with CBD, essentially, for tremors and Parkinson's. Um, so I think the FDA approval of this gave a nod to the industry, um, perhaps in the way that medical marijuana has as a category overall. Coca-Cola, we read in the news a month ago, is interested um, in Canada going into business perhaps with Aurora Farms, a big farm there um, of the cannabis plant um, to make relaxation drinks. By Chloe, for those of you who live in um, New York or LA, it's a very trendy, healthy uh, restaurant with young people. They just introduced, they're very well known for their vegan treats and sweets. So they've just launched a CBD um, collection of, of sweets. And then Origins is the first prestige beauty line um, working with CBD or the cannabis seed extract. They're kind of drawing a line there. Um, and apparently they have been working on this for a long time and felt very strongly that now was the right time to take it to market. They launched about two weeks ago in Sephora um, exclusively. And uh, talking with them uh, about this timing, um, they believe that um, they're getting a lot of consumer feedback on this product. And if you look, if this is your area of expertise, you might want to look at the comments uh, on the Sephora site for how fans are responding to the product. A lot of them are talking about, it's a face mask called Hello Calm by Origins. And a lot of them, um, a lot of the comments focus on relaxation as the skincare benefit which I found to be fascinating. The results-oriented feature of the product was overall relaxation. So why is CBD the buzziest wellness ingredient in the US right now? Um, I alluded before to the fact that I think mar medical marijuana has given a thumbs up um, to its use for cancer patients, palliative care patients, as pain relief, anti-nauseal, um, we certainly know that um, when people are using it um, whose health is impaired, how might it benefit the rest of us? So I think that made a lot more people comfortable with the legalization in about 30 states in the US. Of course, there are some states where it's recreational too, but I really think in the wellness category, the medical marijuana movement um, has opened the door for CBD. I also think, and I'm sure you're all aware, that plant-based living from plant-based foods plant-based beauty has paved the way for looking at more plants um, and how they might help our wellness overall. Of course, this isn't just personal opinion. I consulted with a handful of experts and thought leaders in the category to see why they think CBD is having a moment. 
This first quote, which I hope you've already started to digest, is from Jessica Asaf. We've had her write on Well and Good before. She's a Harvard MBA graduate who was in the beauty industry and is now trying to do for the CBD and cannabis industry what's happened with the beauty industry, that is, make it viable, professionalized, and popular with consumers. She also started a business um, with the co-founder of Honest Company, so that's her background. She says, and I quote, if cannabis were discovered today, it would be considered a miracle plant for all it can do. It's relaxing, it's calming, it has high levels of antioxidants and anti-inflammatories, but it won't affect your mind. So the thinking goes, if it's so easy for so many women, for example, to get a prescription drug for pain or sleeping issues, why is it so difficult to explore the medicinal potential of this plant? So I, th I think she's addressing here something that we all perhaps think about when we think about CBD is what is the stigma attached to this? Um, and if this plant were discovered today and we didn't have such stigma, would we be embracing it for its myriad health benefits? Jeff Chen, who's the MD, MBA behind the UCLA Cannabis Research Initiative, he has a great TED Talk, Breaking Things Down, by the way, if that's something you want to follow up on. He says that cannabis has been used as medicine by nearly every civilization for the past 5,000 years, and it's really just over the past 100 that it's become illegal. So, and, but he believes this conversation isn't just about cannabis, that it's about an entire coming revolution in the way we think about molecules inside food and plants as medicine. And Dr. Drew Ramsey, who's a psychiatrist, um, also writes articles for Well and Good, is on the Well and Good Council of Approved Experts, uh, says that every one of his patients is asking him about CBD. So many people are skeptical of psychiatric medications. Still, they want a silver bullet in this season at CBD, and he's eagerly awaiting the evidence. So he's seeing people come into his practice, perhaps they're on or about to go on or would like to get off their psychiatric medication, and they're looking to the possibilities of CBD for helping them with that. This is some fun stuff here. Uh, we did a survey with Well and Good Readers. A thousand people responded what they currently use CBD for. I, had to pull out this really interesting stat of how 75% of well and good readers said they had tried CBD for wellness. Um, half of them for the first time in just the past six months. That says super fast moving train to me. So here's what they're using it for. Sleep and anxiety and general calm are all pretty neck and neck is the top three reasons. Chronic pain and sore muscles, general happiness, so we're seeing a real balance between mental wellness as well as physical. Um, skin health and beauty, small category, lots of opportunity. And menstrual cramps. I put the menstrual cramps one in there because it's actually a very interesting time for that category. We're also seeing a sub trend for products really addressing um, sexual health and menstrual health for women. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was a category we saw more in as well. So consumer demand for CBD, we learned, is incredibly ahem, high. In 2017, the revenue in the US for turmeric, just to bring out another popular supplement that we've been seeing, was 4.9 billion. Oh, excuse me, that, is 40, that was meant to be 40 million. No, nope, that's a typo. Whoever is taking a picture of that, just edit your photo. 40 million, CBD is 200 to 400 million currently. And just for perspective, Botox in the US, 1.4 billion. So if we're thinking back to that 2020 number of 2 billion for cannabis, chasing Botox's tail, if you will, and Botox has been on the market for 15 years. I find that incredibly interesting and impressive. All of this is happening in a climate where the legal status of CBD is quite shaky and the science is still forthcoming. So just to break out the very cannabis cliff notes high level of what that means, federally CBD is mostly legal. Um, there are lots of loopholes that people can enjoy right now to make, sell, and distribute CBD. Um, and while it has a nice thumbs up, it doesn't have two. And so there are some challenges there. Topically, it seems to be much more acceptable at the moment, um, especially crossing state lines than ingestibles. 
So the federal government right now defers to municipalities or states, which is why you basically need a AAA guide to using CBD in America right now. Um, on the brand side, I can't help but think that it makes product distribution a challenge, and we have seen that. Um, we've seen a lot of e-com sites refer possible um, beauty sites as well, actually, refer people to call a 1-800 number to, to work out how product can be shipped. Um, we've also seen that compliance issues with the financial industry and the banks not liking to work with CBD, which in the US has been a schedule one drug, the most incriminating, most um, uh, difficult yeah. drug. <laughs> Please enjoy the slide and come find me later if you have more questions. <laughs>